Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a little bit of an experiment. You see, I have recently come into the possession of a small pile of Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston fighting fantasy books, and I'm quite keen to try it out. And I think I'm quite keen to try it out with all of you. I was trying to figure out how to put that there. Uh, how do I refer to you? The world at large? Yeah, no. Uh, anyway, today we will be playing The Warlock of Fartop Mountain. Uh, this is the first fighting fantasy book, and I've never actually played these games. Well, that's a lie. I've played these game, one of these games. Maybe two. So I'm aware of how brutal they can be. But I've never really played, I've never played this one. I haven't played a lot of them, and I'm certainly not very good at them. I did in fact win at uh, the, the one I played. I did however cheat. So there's that. But uh, today we're going to see if we can take on that warlock. I don't even know fully what the plot is, so let me just get started here and uh, we'll find out. Deep in the caverns beneath Firetop Mountain, lies an untold wealth of treasure, guarded by a powerful warlock, or so the rumour goes. Many adventurers, expert swordsmen like yourself, have set off for Firetop Mountain in search of the warlock's hoard. None has ever returned. Do you dare follow them? Yeah. Yeah, I dare. So there's a wealth of riches, and the <laughs> selfish git that I am, I'm just gonna walk up and ruin this warlock's place. I mean, I don't even know his name, and I'm just gonna ride on, it, ride on into his home and just wreck everything. Just that kind of guy. Uh, there's a uh, dedication here that are quite sweet for Joanna, a true Galadriel of the spirit from Steve. It's pretty cute. For my mom, Annika, without whom this book would not have been possible, from Ian. It's also pretty adorable. Right, let's see. Oh, I, let me let me start off by explaining over uh, what's going on over here. So I have genned up a character myself for this. I am Angus Hester, expert swordsman and hulking brute of a man. Well, maybe not a brute. I'm sure he's a gentleman. He is, however, still a brute, as completely legitimately rolled my maximum possible for both skill and stamina. I did have a roll of one for luck, so I think, you know, it balances out nicely. With me today, I have a sword, a shield, a backpack and a lantern. I have ten provisions and a potion of fortune. Potion of fortune um, will restore my luck and increase my luck by one. We'll get into the nitty gritty of the rules once I start getting down and dirty and start uh, fist fighting with monsters, or indeed stabbing them, as the case may be. But that's the basics as you need to know for now. Aha! Let's see. Rumours. Only a foolhardy adventurer would embark upon such a perilous quest without first finding out as much as possible about the mountain and its treasures. Before your arrival at the foot of Firetop Mountain, well, I certainly hope before my arrival at foot, the foot of Firetop Mountain, I hadn't considered this, these issues before then, it'd probably be a little bit late. You spent several days with a humble townsfolk of a local village on two days' journey from the base. Being a likeable sort of person, told you, charming. Brute, but a charming brute. You found it easy to get on with local, uh, the local peasants. Although they told you many stories about the mysterious warlock sanctuary, you cannot feel sure that all, or indeed any, of these were based on fact. Villagers had, not seen, many, uh, had seen many adventurers pass through on their way to the mountain, but very few ever returned. The journey ahead was extremely dangerous, so that you knew for certain. Of those who returned to the village, none ever contemplated going back to Fartop Mountain. There seemed to be some truth in the rumour that the warlock's treasure was stored in a magnificent chest with two locks, and the keys to these locks were guarded by various creatures within the dungeons. The warlock himself was a sorcerer of great power. Some described him as old, others as young. Some said his power came from an enchanted deck of cards, others from the silky black gloves that he wore. Nice. Nice. Gotta appreciate a pair of silky black gloves. 
The entrance to the mountain was guarded by a pack of warty-faced goblins, stupid creatures, fond of their food and drink. Towards the inner chambers, the creatures became more fearsome. To reach the inner chambers, you would have to cross a river. The ferry service was regular, but the ferryman enjoyed a good barter, so you should save a gold piece for the trip. Hmm. The locals also encouraged you to keep a good map of your wanderings, for without a map you would end up hopelessly lost within the mountain. When it finally came to your day of leaving, the whole village turned out to wish you a safe journey. Tears came to the eyes of many of the women, young and old alike. You couldn't help wondering whether there were tears of sorrow shed by eyes which would never see alive again. Hmm. Now turn over, it says. So yeah, I've gone down to this village and gotten... Uh, you said that, you know, you, you don't know how much this is based on the fact, but... There are some oddly specific details here, like a, a chest with two locks with keys. How do these people know about these keys? Does the war... <laughs> does the warlock have some kind of periodical? I mean, just chats about his life. He's got... I bet he's got a blog. Or a vlog. Vlog, definitely a vlog, because he, you know he's a sorcerer. He's got that crystal ball, as we can see there, and he's got his buddy dragon that probably you know chimes in with a bit of background uh, chat. Bet it's awesome. Warlock hour. Ah, oh wow. Who number one? The seat face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gargantuan beast. It says beneath this picture of a cave, I guess. At last, your two-day hike is over. You unsheath your sword and lay it on the ground and sigh with relief. As you lower yourself down onto the mossy rocks to sit for a moment's rest, you stretch, rub your eyes, and finally look up at a far-top mountain. The very mountain itself looks menacing. A steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by uh, the claws of some gargantuan beast. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, I understand this now. Sharp rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles. The top of the mountain you can see the eerie red colouring, probably some strange vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. Perhaps no one will ever know exactly what grows up there, as climbing the peak must surely be impossible. Probably not possible for the warlock. I hear he's pretty badass. Your quest lies ahead of you. Across the clearing is a dark cave entrance. You pick up your sword to get, get to your feet and consider what dangers may lie ahead of you. But with determination, you thrust a sword home into its scabbard and approach the cave. Somewhat unnecessary. You peer into the gloom and see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. You light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush your face, and you likely hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. You set off into the cave. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Will you turn west or east? Now, okay, I had not planned for this to be, like, a maze. So, I didn't really think that far ahead. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring up paint. And we're going to make ourselves... Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was doing something with a tiny view. Never mind that. New... Can I, uh, can I, can I make this huge? Uh, bear with you a sec, folks. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, properties... Ah. No, no, that did, did not work at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, inches. Yeah, let's see. Um... 10 by 8. Boom. Excellent. So, this is going to be my map. Um, for what it's worth. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, get rid of all this. I probably should make this bigger, but I got a book in one hand. Awesome. Right. Okay. So, Entrance here. This is the way in. Um, this is the way in, and I have wanted to turn west or east. Uh, I should actually probably put that somewhere more central. There we go. Um, right, so east goes this way, and west goes this way. So I've got options, as we can see. East or west? East or west? I think I'm going to go west. 
because left is always evil, and if Angus Hester does anything, he laughs in the face of evil before punching it. Uh, West is turned to page 71. By the way, while we're here, I heartily recommend getting these books. They are fantastic gems of a bygone age, which doesn't really exist anymore in mainstream media. It never really existed in mainstream media to begin with. But they're fantastic little things. Go out and get them yourself. Give it a try. You'll probably do better than I will. Because I'm not very good at these games. <laughs> By the way, I do expect to die in some horrific hideous manner very early on. <coughs> 71. There is a right hand turn to the north in the passage. Cautiously you approach a sentry post. How odd. Sorry. Cautiously you approach a sentry post in the corner and as you look in you can see a strange goblin like creature in leather armour asleep at, in the, at his post. You try and tiptoe past him. Test your luck. So, whenever you're asked to test your luck, you must roll two dice, and if you roll under or equal your luck, you're lucky. If you roll over, you're unlucky, and stuff happens. Every time you use your luck, your luck decreases by one. So, I've been asked to test my luck because I didn't get a chance. If it was me, I might be honourable and answer like prod and betting. Well, dude, you want a guard? Guard be garden. Right, so I'm going to roll under or equal to my luck, which is 7, quite literally the minimum possible at the start of the game. I rolled a 10. So, yeah. Oh, bear with me a sec, actually. I'm going to check to see if, uh, if luck decreases even when you fail. Because it decreases every time you pass. Yep, every time I test my luck, I decrease by one. That's fine. The reason I've got that slash there in the numbers is you keep your initial value because you usually can't go above your initial value unless under specific circumstances. So it's like a bar essentially. So the first number is going to be my initial value. The second is going to be what I'm currently at. Yes, if you're lucky, he doesn't wake up and remains snoring loudly. Turn to a page. If you're unlucky. You step with a crunch on some loose ground and his eyes flick open, turn to 248. Well, I'm going to 248, folks, um, because I've got the luck of an unlucky thing. The creature that has just awakened is an orc! He scrambles to his feet and turns to grasp at a rope, which is probably the alarm bell. You must attack him quickly! Yes, yes I must. Right, attacking works thus. I roll two dice and add my skill. He rolls two dice and adds his skill. Whoever's got the greater number eh, wounds the other person. Or is it equal? Not sure who wins in the tie, bear with me a sec. <laughs> uh, I read through all this beforehand. Uh, on an equal score, we both fail, essentially. Um, right, so this guy's got skill 6 and strength 5. I'm going to whip up my notepad for this guy's stats. That's a very large notepad. What the hell was I doing before? Oh my god, that's an orc! And that's skill 6. And stamina 5. So this guy's actually pretty, pretty crap. So I'm not too concerned about this fight. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But this fight, I draw my sword dramatically. Oh wow, dude, you gotta be good. Um, well, I rolled a six and a five. He rolled a six and a two. So he got fourteen, while I got uh, twenty-three. I win. He loses two stamina. A deadly blow. You can also use your luck in battle to do more damage, or to avoid, uh, reduce the amount of damage you take from an attack. But I'm not likely to be doing that very often, because I don't have much luck. 
Round two! Whoa, we fight in a dramatic fashion. I got six. He got uh, nine, so this may be closer than I think. I got 18. He got 15. So I win again! Ha ha! By the way, my math is actually pretty terrible, especially on the fly. So uh, expect fail. Expect fail. Last round! Hopefully, I make this a finishing blow! Wow, I rolled really, really terribly, but it's okay, so did he. I got three for a total of nine. He got five for a total of eleven. Ah, oh, I did get nine? Ugh. Oh. Yeah, I told you. Bad math. I got fifteen. I win again, and I chop his silly head off. If you defeat him, you may continue up the passage, presumably go or no. Oh, well, by the way, I missed something on my leather on my equipment. I have leather armor on. Not that I think that comes up much. Boop. <laughs> so yeah, York's dead. Bye bye. We won't miss you. Anyway, so turn to page three zero one. Here we are. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen to the door and you can hear some rasping sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Do you want to open the door? If so, turn to 82. If you wish to press on northwards, turn to 208. Some sort of creature snoring. Uh, uh, you know what? You know what? There's like goblins all over this place. I don't want to get in silly fights. I also reduced my luck too much there. I don't want to get in silly fights. And I don't want to fall for a trap this early in the game. I mean, I could go in there. I could find out something. Rasping sound. What could a rasping sound be? Is it worth investigating? You know what, I got tons of stamina, I got tons of skill, I can take on goblins, I can take on orcs. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go in, turn to 82. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress in the far corner of the room is a short, stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. The same sort of creature you found asleep at the sentry post. He must be the guard for the local night watch. Local. <laughs> Dungeon. Place. Ah, uh, local side there, actually. <laughs> You may either return to the corridor or, and press on northwards, or creep into the room and try and take the box without waking the creature. If you want to try and steal the box, test your luck. If you are lucky, he does not wake up. Turn to a page. If you are unlucky, turn to another page. I want that box, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is my first bit of loot, and Angus Hester is a bit of a cur. So I'm going to try and rob this man while he's asleep. Because it's funny. A got a three. Oh yeah, baby. Luck's finally coming my way. I am lucky. Turn to page one four seven. I say page, number one four seven. I don't know if you've ever seen books like this, but uh, there's several numbers per page. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside, you find a single piece of gold. What an odd way of putting that. A single piece of gold and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Keep the coin and release the mouse, which scurries off down the passage. Ha! Huh. Gain two luck points. Well, that's me back to, um, to luck. Yeah, maximum luck. Nice. Oh, I also, yeah, I found a single gold piece, so my gold is now one. Sweet. Well, we heard about that ferryman, so it's maybe a good idea to keep a hold of that gold coin. You know what I find myself thinking of? You ever see the Robin Hood movie? 
Um, the animated one. You know the mice with the gold piece and it was taxed away from them? Good times. Good times. Anyway, tangent away. Uh, 208. I hope that mouse was good life. I'll miss him. I kind of hope we'd keep it for a pet, but alas. I think I've turned a corner. Ah, never mind. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm going to get lost. Further up the passage along the west wall, you see another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. If you want to try opening the door, turn to 397. If you want to continue northwards, turn to 363. Could be a trap. I find the silence suspicious. I am suspicious of all things. I want to try opening the door. I mean, it's got to be worth it. Somewhere for him. 397. Oops. This is something I'm going to have to keep an eye out for. Um, I nearly went to the wrong page. 397, 397, The door opens. The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There's a stale smell to the air. In the centre of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. Hmm. So the, it's basically like the other room, but with no one in it. Well, the candle's lit. So it can't be just a trap room. Because a trap room wouldn't have anyone coming in to light the candles. But the air's stale. So it may not be occupied. I'm going for the box. 240. <laughs> it's going to be a trap. There's traps everywhere. I hate these games. Um, 240, 240, 240. Oh no! <laughs> the box is light, but something rattles within. You open the lid, and a small snake darts out to bite your wrist. You must fight the snake. <laughs> it's a trap. Why do these guys keep pets in boxes under the table? I don't understand this. There's a picture here of the box, and it's not like this, like... It's a snakeskin box! Why didn't they say it was a snakeskin box? I'd probably would have been more suspicious if they hadn't left out this, this very vital detail. And it's not even like... A, a, a crap wooden box either, or a cage. It's like velvet lined and everything. It's beautiful. And they just stuffed the snake into it. Well, moving on. I'm gonna... I'm gonna snap a, uh, stab a snake. Because why the hell not? Um. Well, snake. I got, um, 20. The snake's skill is 5, so you got uh, 12. So I win, it only has 2 stamina, I stab it and it's dead. That is everything done. That's all you need to know. We move on and never speak of this again. <coughs> turn to, if you kill the snake, turn to 145. This is a story that Angus is going to take to his children. It's like. And I opened this box! This most beautiful snake skin velvet light box you've ever seen. And what comes out? Bloody snake! <laughs> I know, right? What do they keep in these boxes? Why do they keep their pets in these velvet light boxes? I just don't understand! I guess it could be like a magic snake and it's just waiting for me to open that box forever. Ooh. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snake. And out of it uh, has fallen a bronze colored key with the number 99 carved into it. You may take this key with you, note it in your equipment list, and leave the room. Add one luck point and turn to 363. 
Well, my luck's at maximum, so I don't get luck. Kinda sucks. Yeah, kinda sucks. Uh, so I have a bronze key with a number 99. So where's my equipment? I imagine we'd get many of these keys, so... That doesn't in fact mean I've got 99 bronze keys, but hey, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, da -da -da -da, there we are. And leave the room. Turn to 363. Page turning noises. There we go. Sort of, kind of. Man, these books get so pod, by the way, like, so quickly. Let's make sure you get the right page, 363. Further up the passage on the west wall, you see another small, another similar door. You listen to the door and grimace to hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life. Do you want to go in the room and investigate this hideous din, or walk up the passageway? Angus feels it is, it is his duty to investigate this noise. Because who knows what's in there? I might walk in on an orc in a bathtub, and that would be the funniest thing. So, page 370, investigate the hideous thing. The door opens to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner, and in the centre room is a wooden table upon which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. What was what, what this box made of? This is very pertinent information, by the way. Seated around the table are two small creatures with warty skin, dressed in leather armour. They're drinking some sort of grog, and by the way they stagger to their feet to on your arrival, you, they, you, you assume they are very drunk. You may either draw your sword and leap forward at them, or slam the door quickly and run up the passage. I, I can take two drunken goblins, I think. Uh, leap forward, turn to page uh, 116. Oh, there we are, perfect. I, yep. One of the problems with flicking through this book is I keep getting distracted by all the, uh, the pictures on the other pages, which look a lot more interesting than my fight with drunk goblins. That was a dragon that time. They, they nearly distracted me. Um, that's another problem with the games like this: is that you get um, like spoilers for later on, like dragons and other things. The two drunken orcs you now face are obliviously startled at your entrance, and as quickly as they are able, they fumble round for their weapons. You must attack each one in turn. Their drunkenness allows you to add one point to your dice roll when rolling to work out your attack strength in each attack round. Oh, cool. Okay, so first orc. Uh, orc 1 has skill 5 and stamina 4. I'll, I'll, I'll just write down my stamina because that's quicker and easier. The second has stamina 5. Cool, I, I'm pretty confident I've taken these guys out. So. Like, you know, let's just, let's just keep these numbers here, you know, um, I'm keeping you guys in... You, you guys are keeping track of what I'm talking about here. Um, so, I'm confident I can take these guys out. So, first up first, first orc, four stamina, two hits, I should take this guy out easy. Oh my god, I rolled ten. So that's twenty-two, versus his, he's got, the boy got a skill five, by the way. He just rolled a, uh, nine, so that's fourteen. Yeah, I win. In fact, more than that because I got plus one. Right, I rolled seven, he rolled six, I win again, he dies. Orc one dead, I perforated him twice in his chest with vicious prods with my sword. Because that's what how sword fights happen, right? Just, just prodding, prodding. Jab, 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 and all that. The second orc. I swoop viciously towards his head, and I roll a six. He gets an eight. Yeah, I win too. <laughs> Poor guys. Bringing his stamina down to three. 
I strike at him again. His clumsy blows attempted to ward me off. Come to something, actually. Uh, I got three, so that's 15, 16. He got seven, plus five is 12. I hit him again. He begs for mercy, Angus Hester shows none. I got a five. He got a seven. I got considerably more than he did. I don't know what he would do the ending at this point. He dies. Angus Hester laughs. Ha 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 ha. Puny drunken goblins. I drink your grog now. I'm getting a bit carried away. If you win the barrel, turn to three, seven, eight. If you wish to escape, escape? Who's escaping at this point? Look, I have basically walked into this goblin stronghold and I'm just cleaning house here. It's it's just grim. There's nothing heroic about this. These are just people that I'm murdering in their own home. It's horrific. I'm not gonna try and escape. There's rules for escaping. It's it's not happening right now. If you win the battle, turn to three, seven, eight. I shall do so. Thank you, book. Because, <laughs> oh, did I ever win that battle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ahem. You, you wipe your bloodied sword on the mattress. Can I have, like, a rag for that kind of thing? A blood rag seems like a thing a proper adventurer should have. The green blood leaves a slimy stain on the straw. Now that's just getting personal. Stepping over the bodies towards the table, you flinch at the foul stench of the creatures. You pick up the books from under the table and examine it. It is a small wooden box with crude hinges. The name Ferraro di Maggio. Di Fer Ferrari Faraggio. Faraggio di Maggio. Is inscribed on a brass nameplate on its lid. If you wish to open the box, turn to 296. I feel like this might be another trap. I'm gonna open the box though. 296. Oh, that's interesting. The box contains a small leather brown book entitled The Making and Casting of Dragonfire. You open the pages and begin to read. Unfortunately, it is written in your own language. Oh, fortunately, it is written in your own language. And so it was probably not understood by the orcs. Otherwise, the treasure would certainly not be as loosely guarded as it was. Making casting of dragonfire. I like the sound of that. The book is written in tiny handwriting by, by Fragio di Maggio. In it, he tells the story of his life's work. The creation of the Dragonfire spell, with which to fight evil dragons. Hmm. You read how, in his last years, Far Farigo, 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 finally perfected his spell, but by then was too old to make use of it. So he completed his book and locked it in a chest and hid it in the depths of Firetop Mountain. You might be a better place for a book like this. The library. Afraid that it might fall into the wrong hands, the last page reads, <coughs> And so, you who now hold this book, you have my life's work in your hands. The power of destruction is yours, if you wish it, but do not waste it, unless you do use the spell for the purpose for which it was intended. You shall be consumed by evil itself. Die by the fire from your own hands. Remember, only when the dragon breathes its fire at you should you raise your arms and say, Ikul Erif, Ikam Erif, 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 Dimaggio. Is that a signature or is that part of the spell? You say these words slowly and softly. Suddenly the pages seem to glow, and as this, this glow disappears, so do the words on the pages of the book. You repeat the spell to yourself and memorize it, and leave the room. So I've read this book, 
So I'm just going to write Dragonfire spell on my um, equipment page over here, just to make sure I remember that I've actually learned this. So this is to fight evil dragons, I believe the book says. With which to fight evil dragons. Now, I just read this whole book. It's a book. Did I just like just sit for hours on end in this small chamber just pouring through it? Who even knows? You memorize it and leave the room. Turn to 42. Excellent. 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. 42. Intermission. Page turning. Intermission. You eventually arrive at the end of the passage, at a three-way junction. You may either turn to the west or to the east. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely came up a corridor here. So let's um, go up, up, and go up, go up, and just write like goblins or something. Oh yeah, this is this is like perfect map making skill. Map making is not one of Angus Hester's. Um, repertoire. <laughs> so I may either turn to the west or to the east. You know what? I kind of want to go west again. I don't really want to start like doubling back or anything. So I think it's best at this point for us to uh, turn west again. Let's just make sure I remember that there's a bunch of rooms here. Because that's totally going to be important and <laughs> isn't at all a superfluous addition. Because there was a bunch of rooms on the uh, the west, was it? Yeah, that's totally how those how those were. I mean, they're kind of rough rooms. Good times, good times. Where on earth are we? Ah, there we go. I may either turn west or east. I shall turn west. Two five seven. Two five seven. The passageway, the passageway runs straight for several meters, and then, in, then ends at a wooden door. You listen at the door and hear angry shouting coming within. Will you investigate, or turn back? Angry shouting. Could be a bunch of monsters fighting. Could be a lot of monsters fighting. Could be gambling. Could be a prisoner in there. I'm still perfect. I'm not hurt. I've got maximum luck. I think I can deal with whatever situation this game throws me right now. So I'm going to go through this door. Uh, <laughs> keep this in place. I'm going to investigate. One, six, eight. Why does it do this? Oh dear. Will you investigate? Turn to one, six, eight. Turn to 168, turn to 198. Okay. I don't mind getting messed around. Oh god, that was an ugly picture. <coughs> Give me a sec. <laughs> I may have turned to the wrong page. I think it did. Oh my. Bear with me one sec, folks. Right, so yeah, yeah, this makes perfect sense. This must be the one I'm looking for. That was very bizarre. You open the door to a large room. A large chair behind a solid looking table suggests to you that someone or something of rank uses this room. A chest in the center of in the center catches your eye, and in a corner of the room stands a man sized creature with a warty face standing over a smaller creature of a similar race. With the whip in his hand, the orc chieftain has been beating his servant who's whimpering beneath him. Will you? 
attack them both, spring the chieftain in hope that the servant will aid you, leave the room and head for the junction. I'm going to attack the chieftain, because why the hell not? 65. You spring the chieftain, his seven rises to his feet, picks up a hefty wooden stick and joins the melee. But to your disappointment, he attacks you, ungrateful wretch. Seeing this, you may escape down the corridor or continue the fight. Uh, I'm going to continue the fight because, you know, it's just a guy. 372. Change your page, change your page, change your page. <laughs> Three, seven, two. The battle commences! Oh man, this guy's actually pretty good. Comparatively to the rest of the orcs. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I fight them, yeah, I fight them one at a time. Um, oh, oops. I fight them one at a time. Because that's how it was done earlier, so I'm not really going to change that. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, it says actually here, fight them one at a time, so that's fine. So the Orc Chief now has skill 7 and stamina 6. Well, let's get this party started. Epic boss battle! I roll an 8, he rolls a 9. So, 8 plus 12 is 20. 9 plus 7 is 16. I stab him viciously in the face! Like, directly into the face. But the warts, the, the, the mass of warts, deflect the blade away from his face. Angus Hester shouts, DAMN! And strikes again. I roll a 5. He rolled once again a 9. I got 17, he got 16. This one's a close battle. There's an exchange of blows, metal clashing against metal. But eventually, Angus Hester hits home again, drawing sickly green blood. Angus Hester rolls 7, while the goblin rolls 11, making 18, whereas I got 19 once again. Metal rings against metal, and the Orc Chieftain's head is cloven from his body, and spraying hideous blood everywhere. God, it's gruesome. <coughs> and then Angus turns to the slave, who strikes at him with a stick. Oh, the drama! I got six, making eighteen. He got nine, making fourteen. Ow! That's got a sting! The poor wretch, already bleeding from copious whip wounds, bleeds even more from a stabbing. I roll 5, he rolls 12. Nice show, slave. So that's a total for 17. Whereas I got 17! <laughs> God, this is close! We both miss, by the way, if you recall. We both miss in such cases. He rolled a 10 for 15. I rolled a 4 for 16. The slave goes down. That was fun. <coughs> Turn to page 21. Epic voice. Epic voice rather hurts my throat. The green blood of the dead orc smells foul as it seeps from their bodies. You step around the corpses and investigate the chest. It's a sturdy affair, made of strong oak and iron and firmly locked. You may try to smash the lock with your sword, or leave it alone and go through the open door. I'm going to try and smash the lock, because why the hell not? 339. 339. The lock was obviously inadequate, much like these orcs. It flies off and lands on the floor several meters away. 
You lift up the heavy lid and your eyes widen as you see a gold sheen coming from within. A fair number of gold pieces are inside. In one corner lies a small black bottle with a tight glass stopper containing a liquid of some kind. Also in the chest is a silky black glove. As you're in the chest, you hear yourself click and wince in pain as a small dart shoots forward into your stomach. Roll one die and subtract this number from the points of your stamina to determine the effect of the poison on the dark tip. One die and subtract from a stamina. Oh my god. Fine. I lose six points, the absolute maximum that poison could do. Well, I guess it's about time this dungeon started challenging me. Oh snap. If you are still alive. Yes, Book. Yes, I am still alive. Turn to 201. <clears throat> you sink to the floor. You pull the dart out and decide to bandage the wound. This gives some relief, but you still feel weak. You decide to take it easy and examine the contents of the chest. But if you wish, you may eat some provisions here. There are 25 gold pieces, and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of visibility. Good for one dose. The glove is mystery. You may put any or all of these into your haversack and leave the room. Well, let's grab the gold. And eat some provisions. Because that was actually a fairly hefty hit. And we might as well take some trinity whilst here. My personal rule is if you need to be healed, heal. If your healing object is going to take you over, like it's going to be wasted in some way. Every time you eat a provision, you get four health points back. So I wouldn't eat another provision now because I could only de get two of those four health points. It's about conservation of health. Uh, potion of visibility is pretty sweet, so I'm going to dump it down here with the next to the potion of fortune. Potion of. This is where I embarrass myself by misspelling visibility. There we go. And. Oh, how odd. Uh, it's only got one dose. Oh, by the way, these things have two doses, so I'm going to put this here to represent two doses. And this has one dose. Excellent. And a silk glove. He said it was a black silk glove, didn't he? They said something with the Warlock's gloves, didn't they? Better than silky stuff. And I did express my uh, my fondness for silky gloves. So uh, I'm going to snatch up the glove and hope that I find its pair. Otherwise, things are going to get weird. Because wearing one glove is a little bit strange. So, I think that's a good place to stop today. This has been an experiment. I am Jisov. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and uh, hopefully I'll continue my adventure through the uh, Firetop Mountain dungeon. The dungeon of Firetop Mountain, as perhaps it is known. It's not really mentioned here very much. And I'm actually slightly disappointed that there isn't actually fire atop the Firetop Mountain. Just some plants. Think about it. Anyway. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you all later.